Look at that sun. Look at that sun. Damn. <laughs> Taking my dick in my pants All right, so today we're gonna talk about how to reverse a singly linked list now this is a classic first and second year college student programming question and this is what I call a utility problem. Um, utility problems are prop coding interview questions where they don't really require you to think of a new algorithm or think of something uh, in a special way. They are questions to see whether you know how to do something, whether you know how to manipulate a data structure a certain way, whether you know how to search it a certain way. It's, it's basically a utility question. There's nothing special about it. It's just whether you know how to do it or not. So this is a question I got um, in my uh, second Explore Microsoft interview. I actually failed both, that's a long story. But um, yeah, this is like a freshman, sophomore question. Um, I was asked to reverse a singly linked list and then a doubly linked list. I'll do doubly linked list in another video. So for this problem, it's, it's simple. If we have a linked list saying one, two, three, we turn it into three, two, one. So we either, we could copy it into an array and then reverse that array and then build a linked list from it. But the real point of the question and most linked list questions, basically all of them, is pointer manipulation. We wanna be able to do it in linear time and constant space or O of N space if we do it recursively because of the call stack. So we're gonna look at both the iterative and the recursive ways to reverse a singly linked list. All right, so this is how we reverse a linked list iteratively. This is going to run in O of n time because we're gonna to touch n nodes and O of one space because we're not gonna be creating space that scales as our input gets very large. We're only gonna keep constant variables, um, just pointers, right? This is basically how it pans out. We're going to initialize uh, pointers. We're, we need two fundamental pointers. We need a previous pointer because when you have a singly linked list, you can't get the node before you. So we need to remember that during our iteration. So we're going to have a previous pointer, a cur pointer to say where we're at currently. And then we need a, well, I just stashed this next pointer because we need to save the next pointer because if we change current's next value, we're going to lose our next pointer in the iteration. We're going to not know where to go next. We need to stash that first. So while the current cur does not equal null, we save the next pointer in, in our temp variable next. We stash that pointer and then we reverse. We point the current node to its previous node and then the previous node becomes the node we're sitting on and the next node becomes the, the current node becomes the node that we saved, which was next. And then at the end, our previous node will be pointing at the head of the new list. So let's walk through this on an example. So when we start, um, previous is going to point to null. So let's put that here. So I just put an X here, that just means null. Pre will be pointing to null, cur. Cur will be pointing to our list head. And then we're gonna need a third marker. Let's make it green. We're gonna need a third marker for next. So we haven't made next yet. So now we need to stash the next. So let's do that. So we stash the next and then cur.next equals prev. So now we can reverse the pointer and cur.next. So cur, its next value, we switch up the pointer, is prev. And then now prev becomes cur, cur becomes next. So we do this. We haven't changed next yet. Next still sits there. It, it doesn't matter, we're about to set it again. But now our current node is our previous next node and our prev is where we were just sitting at, cur. So now we need to advance next. Um, next is going to be cur.next. Cur so cur is sitting here, next is this. And so now, now we need to point curs next to prev. So let's do that. And as you can see at each step, we're seeing the node we sit on point it to its previous. That's why we save it, it's singly linked. We can't get our predecessor. Uh, if it was doubly linked, we have constant time access to the predecessor, but not with singly linked. So now we need to advance prev and cur. And now you're starting to see the pattern. Now you should start getting it. We advance prev and now we advance cur. And now we're back at the top of our while loop. Cur is still not null, we're not finished. So now we need to advance next. We're advancing next, but we're doing it at the top of the loop, remember that. So now we advance next, and now perform the reversal. And now we need to advance current and prev. 
and now is cur null. No, keep going. So next, advance next, and cur dot next is null, which is fine. And now we need to point cur to prev. At each step, we're doing a single reversal. And now we're at the end. Now we advance cur and prev. Prev, prev points where cur is, and now cur points to the next that we stashed, which is null. So, oh, and I forgot to erase this, sorry. So now, what do we have? We have our fully reversed list. Is cur null? Yes. Our while loop is finished. What do you notice? Prev is sitting at the new head. That's why we return prev here. It's nothing special. Prev ends up sitting in the new head, so this is our new list. Four, two, one. So that's it. That's how we do it. This is how it ends up. That's where our pointers end up. And now we have our reversed list. So, I mean, graphically it looks reversed, like, like it looks like it's pointing. But in reality, this is what our new list is. Um, and that's how you reverse it iteratively. So now, and, and again, this runs in O of n time and constant space. Now let's do it in the recursive way, which also runs in O of n time because we're touching n nodes, but it runs in O of n space because we're gonna create n stack frames for our recursion. And we're gonna see how this recursion pans out. All right, so this is how you reverse a linked list recursively. It can be confusing, it does not have to be. I will try to explain it to the best of my abilities, showing you the call stack and each, and, and the way everything interacts. So here is the basic overview of how reversing a linked list recursively works. What, what each call stack frame is going to ask, is gonna say, here's, here's my next node, reverse this. Give me a reverse list, not including me. And I'm gonna pass my next node here to the reverse, the same function, and I'll say, give me a reverse list of the rest. Give me a reverse list of the rest. We're gonna keep doing that until we have one node left. So, and then, and then when, once we get to the base case of one node, which is the last node in the list, then the last node in the list is gonna say, we're finished. It's gonna return itself to the node before it. And then what it's going to do is the node before it is going to say, okay, now I have a reversed list. And now I need to add myself. It's going to add itself. You're going to say, you're gonna get the reverse list back, you're gonna add yourself, and then I'm gonna to return to the guy before me who called me, I'm gonna to return to the guy before me and say, here, I have an, a reverse list plus myself, now go do your work. And you keep doing that, so you go all the way down, get to the last node, the last node is a reverse list. One node is a reverse list. So it returns itself, and then now this node has to, oh, this node to work with, it reverses the pointer, then returns, and you, so you go all the way down, get the last node, and then you tack on one node each time, jumping back until you get to the top of the call stack where you started, and then you're finished. Then you reverse the whole list. So here's the base case. So our base case is if head is null, then we have no work to do. If head.next is null, then we have one item, and that's a reverse list. One item is reverse list. So we just return the node. I don't know if it's like too visible, but I'm notating the head with green and I'm notating the reversed list with blue. So what we do is at the very top call, I have the node I'm sitting at and I say, reverse the rest of the list, not including me. I pass in my next node. So I say, just, just get back to me, get back to me and reverse the rest of my nodes. And each node does that until we get to the last node. So this, this keeps going down, 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 down. This will not have a value until we get to the bottom of the call stack and the, the end of the linked list. And then we're gonna operate here and this is the upwards reversal. Okay, so this takes us down, it takes us downwards, it takes us to the next node, the next node, the next node, the next node, till we get to the end of the list. And then this says, let me tack myself on and let me, let me take my next value, let me set it to myself. So I'm gonna set my next nodes next to me to myself, and then I'm gonna set myself to null, because I don't know if I'm the last node to reverse, so I need to, we'll see it in the example. And then we return upwards, and then we return the, the reverse list head that we were given upwards. So this might be confusing, this is the code, this might be confusing, but let's walk through an example so we can see these stack frames. I can say it, but you need to see it. Okay, so we start out each of these frames represents a stack frame in our recursion. So we start at the top. All right, so I zoomed in so we can look at the actual recursion here. So when we start, our head node is gonna be at the head. We're going to, this is what's passed into the function, head. And then 
RLH means reverse list head. This is going to be the head of the reverse list. This is what's going to be returned to us upwards. We don't know this yet. So we call, we, we, we have our head, so we call the function again with the next node. So this next node is now the head in its current stack frame. So we call this, we say reverse the, last of the rest of the list. We call it, this is, the new, this is the head in this stack frame. We say reverse the rest of the list. This is the head in this stack frame. And what we see is, this is our base case. Right here, well not right there, but right here. When we have one node, we, this is our base case. This is when we say, this is a reverse list. Now we can return upwards. Now we can return upwards and the reverse list head is here. And now this guy, three, is able to work with the rest of the list. Three has itself and then a reversed list. So what head does is it says, give me, give me the, um, get my next value, four, and set its next value to myself. So let's do that. Okay, now, now what we have is we've reversed, done one reversal, we have the reversed list head, and we don't want to lose that head. We need to return it to whoever's above us. So what we do is we return it upwards. So we've already established our new head of the reverse list. We need to return it upwards. And now that we've returned it upwards, now we have the ability to work with it. Two, now, now two, what does two have? It has the rest of the list, that's, it's a reverse list now, and it has itself. But now two says, let me add myself. Let me add myself to the reverse list. So two grabs us next, and then it says, next, point yourself to me. And now that that is pointing to itself, two's finished, and it's gonna revert, return the head of the re new reverse list upwards. And so now one is at the very top of the call stack, and now one has itself and the rest of a reverse list to work with. One is going to say, let me add myself, two, point yourself to me, head.next, set that next value to me. Head.next equals head.next.next .next equals head. So now we're at the very top of the call stack, we have a fully reversed list, and what, what do you see here? This guy, what is reverse list head? Reverse list head is just this, and it's four. It's the head of our reverse list. We saved it by returning it as we went upwards, and now we have it. And now at the end of our code, we have this reverse list head to return. So when we're finished, we have a reference here, so we can go, and since we've reversed the list, then it's reversed. Well, that was kind of dumb to say, but since we have reference to this head, since we have reference to this head, Every pointer is already reversed. Four points to three, three points to two, and now the list is reversed. This is how we do it recursively. So what we do is the whole point or the whole way the recursive thing works is we start at the top. We have one node. We ask, hey, neighbor, my next node, reverse. Give me a reverse list. Neighbor, give me a reverse list. Neighbor, give me a reverse list. Neighbor, give me a reverse list. When we get to the last node, the last node says, hey, second to last node, I'm a reverse list. Add yourself to me. Hey, next node, add yourself to me. Add yourself. And all the way, all the way back up the call stack, we remember the, the last node, the head of the new list. And when we're at the top, we can just return the head of the new list and we reverse all the pointers on the way upwards so we're finished. Then our list is effectively reversed. This is how you do it recursively. It's pretty straightforward when you think about it and eventually it's just, you're going to internalize how to work with these pointers with linked lists the more problems you do. So that's this video. If this helped, um, hit the like button, share, subscribe, helps the channel out. My goal is to get all of the leak code problems, 250 problems, do a video for each of them. This is probably going to take me a year, um, but yeah.